Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on how to find the difference quotient of any function. Before we begin by looking at an example problem, I'd like to take a few seconds of your time and talk about what the difference quotient is, what it's used for, and why it's important. The answer to the first question is that it's defined as f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, where f is any function. The answer to the second question, what is it used for, is that it's used to find the slope of a function at a single point. And it's important for those of you going on to calculus because it's used in the definition of a derivative. With that out of the way, let's look at an example problem. So suppose we're given the problem, let f of x equal x squared minus 4x plus 2. And we're asked to find the difference quotient of this function. The first thing we want to do is break this down into a series of steps so we have a general process for solving these problems. So the first thing we're going to want to do is evaluate f of x plus h. The second thing we're going to want to do is substitute the result for, um, from step 1 for f of x plus h and the given function for f of x in the definition of a difference quotient. And the third thing we're going to want to do is fully simplify the entire fraction. So for step one, the first thing we need to do is substitute x plus h for x in f of x. When we do that, we'll get the result of f of x plus h equals x plus h squared minus 4x plus h plus 2. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually expand the result because later on we're going to have to combine like terms between the original given function and the function of f of x plus h. So we need to actually have this fully expanded that way it's easy to combine the terms later. So we're going to use the definition of a perfect square trinomial and the distributive property to actually expand out the result. When we use the definition of a perfect square trinomial, we can see that the x plus h squared easily expands out to x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And when we use the distributive property, we can see that the negative 4x plus h distributes to negative 4x and negative 4h. Now we're ready to move on to step 2, where we have to substitute the result. So the first thing we're going to do is substitute the result from step 1 into our origin or into our definition of a difference quotient, which nets us this as the result. The next thing we need to do is substitute in the given function, which will result in this being our result. Now we actually see that there's one thing we can distribute, which is the negative that surrounds the given function. By doing that, we can actually get this as our result, and now we're ready to actually move on to step three, which is to simplify the entire fraction. So the first thing we're going to do is group and combine like terms. So when we group like terms, we're going to move them all so that we have x squared next to x squared, x's next to x's, um, loose numbers next to loose numbers, and so on. That way it's very easy for us to see what they combine into. And in this case, we see that the x squareds cancel, the 4x's cancel, and the 2's cancel, which in turn is going to leave us with 2xh plus h squared minus 4h all over h. The next thing we need to do is actually factor out that h that's in the uh, numerator of the fraction. So when we do that, we're going to have h times 2x plus h minus 4 all over h. And now we can see that if we divide the fraction, we're actually going to be done because our final answer will be 2x plus h minus 4. So here's some quick tips to remember when you're tackling these problems. First, remember the process. You want to first evaluate f of x plus h. Second, you want to substitute the result from step 1 for f of x plus h. And then you want to substitute the given function for f of x in your definition of a uh, difference quotient. And third, you want to fully simplify the resulting fraction. Also, the given function should always cancel out entirely. If you're left with an x squared or other such things from your given function, then something's gone wrong along the way, and you should go back and look at your work to see where you messed up. 
The same thing is true of the denominator of h. It should also always cancel. So if you ever wind up with a fraction as your end result, you also know that something's gone wrong along the way, and you should go back and really look at all your steps to make sure that everything is canceling correctly. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.